Hi everyone, welcome back. The longest day of the year is slowly drawing to a close. The sun's going down now, but it's nice and quiet on the allotment site, so I thought I'd give you a, a full tour of the plot. And this is the first update for about five weeks. Um, I hope you enjoy the tour. Hi again, as I say welcome back and uh, we'll start with a look at the no dig plot. This is the, the first allotment. Uh, I'm sorry if it's a little bit breezy but hopefully the wind sock will keep the, uh, the interference uh, to a minimum. As you can see the, the plots had a little bit of much needed TLC and all of the raised beds have had a lick of paint. At long last I managed to cover up the carrots as well with the real McCoy this year with some uh, Enviromesh. Uh, cost me about £20 on the internet but hopefully it'll last maybe 10 years or so so it, it should be good value for money. If I just pull round to the side you'll see that the no dig border that divides the first and the second plot that's all been covered in manure. If we just look down in front of us you'll see it's the same here too. It's quite wide this bit, it's about nine foot wide I would say and the bit to the right here maybe about eight feet and it's probably about 45 to 50 feet in length this section of border and if you look at it you'll see that we've got all of our squashing now and courgettes and we've also got some dahlias in as well. Now earlier in the year we took out the dividing chicken wire fence but to try and reintroduce a little bit of definition between the two plots we've put in the dahlias. Uh, only one of them in flower as yet but we've got about 10 I think uh, zigzagged to about where the third bed there on the left ends so it should provide a little bit of definition. Looking at the beds you can see that everything's growing on nicely. Elephant garlic just here on the left, that'll be taken up shortly. Sweet corn's doing very nicely, uh, but it's had to be staked. When uh, Storm Hector came by, it started to blow them over, and it's a little bit more exposed higher up on the uh, first plot. So they've been staked in with canes. The last bed over there, to the right of the Enviromeshed bed, that's got spring onions and banana shallots and down here we've got a middle bed with broccoli and then beetroot to either side and some uh, silver skin onions. So that's the, the first plot. I'll maybe show you the banana shallots and the elephant garlic just so you can see at what stage they are. As you can see the elephant garlic's bulbing up nicely. I'll put my hand at the side just so that you can reference it and get some idea of the uh, the size of the bulb. You can see the ones that have developed nicely because the the base of the greenery tends to divide and broaden and it's done the same on this one and you can see just there it kind of splits and widens at the bottom but they're not all like that. I would say probably a third to 40% are large like that uh, but the others have still got a little bit of growing to do. Uh, the stems have not really split and spread at the bottom like those ones. As you can see some of them, a good 50% I would say, are still a little bit spindly on top so these are going to be left about another three weeks and they've not been uh, hit very much by rust or anything they are starting to look a little bit bleached but I think they'll be good for another three weeks or so just turn and show you the sweet corn this is the variety Ambrosia and you can see that they're very very substantial already got quite a hefty 
uh, stem to them and this is a really good variety if it performs like last year uh, we should get two or three cobs off each plant whereas with the swift you, you you tend just to get one large and one slightly smaller one but they're looking really good for the time being as long as the uh, the wind doesn't become any more aggressive the banana shallots are all thickening up nicely as well these were a little bit later to go in this year um, they weren't really ready in my opinion to be planted out uh, as early as they were last year I think they went in in mid-May last year this year it was at the end of May uh, but we had that cold start to the season but they're all okay they're all standing up proud and the bases are thickening up nicely and to say we've not had much in the way of rain most of the alliums are doing really well so um, I'll take a look at the the second plot now and you can see how the onions are getting on along with a few other things okay looking at the second plot now and you can see that at last everything's starting to green up really nicely and the whole plot's been uh, weeded so it's probably as good as it's going to get I would say for this season once uh, all the growth really goes mad maybe in a month or so uh, you'll not be able to get to the weeds and uh, it, it looks fantastic for a while and then uh, it's all downhill from there towards the end of the season so for the time being it looks uh, quite nice I think but under the blue cloches we've got six rows of Brussels sprouts we've got some overwintering onions just in front of the greenhouse the main crop of this year's onions to the right there the parsnips are doing fantastic they're all about a foot and a half in height now all the potatoes are through the second wave there were three rows there at the end there they've broken ground as well and there are quite a few flowers on the uh, charlotte and kestrel as well on the far bed you can't quite see it i don't think from here but there are four broad drills of legumes we've got munch two peas beans and then some more peas just just breaking ground and then all the leeks are in now i'll show you the the onions uh, because uh, i'm really quite happy with those both the overwintering and this season's onions we're looking at the overwintering white onions now last year i made the decision not to plant the red barren onions to overwinter because in previous seasons they'd all almost without exception all gone to seed and we didn't get very many out of the white ones either but this year's white onions have been absolutely fantastic we've had five go to seed and the rest as I mentioned earlier notwithstanding the fact that we've not had much in the way of rain have produced some absolutely staggering bulbs I think really uh, I've never had overwintering onions doing this well before and I think I've got 45 um, there are a couple that are a little bit smaller but they're still putting on weight I was tempted to take them up uh, last weekend but yeah, there's a noticeable uh, difference in size every three or four days when you look and uh, they're still fattening up a little bit and it's really nice to see them and the shallots the germo overwintering shallots just here they're starting to uh, fatten up as well they've been a little bit slow but um, these overwintering onions are going to stay in the ground I think probably for another week to 10 days then they're going to be lifted and we're going to put some January King cabbage and maybe some kohlrabi in this bed we'll look over at this season's onions now take a close look at those it's still early in the season for the main crop onions but they're bulbing up fantastically these are the caraval pink and as you can see if I slip my hand in you can see the bulbs are a fair old size um, these were the first to go in this year they were all mail order all organic uh, sets and uh, they were started in modules and you can see most of them are doing really quite nicely um, so uh, 
nothing to complain about there. The heat treated Red Baron, they're not quite as far on but the bases are all thickening up nicely and then the white heat treated Santero, they're doing okay as well. I would say they're in second place uh, at the moment with the, uh, the Red Baron bringing up the rear. Parsnips are doing great as well. Um, this is all despite virtually no rainfall uh, over the last seven or eight weeks. We've had maybe two, possibly three um, evenings when we've had a, a sudden downpour, like a cloudburst if you will, uh, but it's not lasted for more than about 15 or 20 minutes and that's been it. Um, I did water the onions probably for about three or four weeks, um, maybe every second or third day, uh, but for the last four weeks of the, the decent weather they've, uh, they've not been touched. The leeks are in as well and uh, we didn't have as many germinate this year but we had more than enough. I think we've got about nine rows and there are about 15 I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe a dozen. Uh, so nine rows of a dozen, so that's 108 leeks. It's more than enough I think. And this season's just gone season's leeks were fantastic as well. With the milder weather they stayed in the ground for much longer. We're looking at the Monge 2 peas and beans. They've all done well. You can see the the peas are on. These are Kelvard and Wonder and uh, they've yet to fill out but there are plenty on there. The Monge 2 are only just coming into flower at the back there so they'll be a little bit longer but once they start uh, they don't take very long do they? And then the final drill of peas, they're coming through as well. So everything, as I say, is growing wonderfully uh, compared to previous seasons. Um, we had a cold start to the season, didn't we? And then uh, two months of glorious weather. And uh, as I said, the potatoes are in flower. The first six, I think it was six rows that we put in, might have been seven. And uh, these are Charlotte, Kestrel and Pentland Javelin. And we'll be making a start on these soon. Um, we've made the mistake in the past of leaving them too long in the ground. And when you've got so many to go at, because we've got this large bed, which is probably about 12 foot by uh, 20 foot. And we've also got another bed in on the other allotments. Um, when you've got so many potatoes you really need to start and take them even if you know they're a little bit on the small side because they're, they're, they're all the better for it I think. I've eaten five pots out of my six that are in the greenhouse and they've been lovely. Modest in terms of yield but they've been beautiful potatoes so um, maybe in a week's time we'll start on these babies as well. We'll just take a, a glance over the third and fourth plots together so that this uh, update is not too long and you can see that all of the dailies are in now potatoes down in front of me you can barely see them for the the raspberries if I just stand to one side you can see the raspberries uh, well they've gone mad as well and we should uh, have a real glut this year we had loads last year but this year is going to be the best year I think that we're going to have and with a bit of luck they'll be really tasty as well because it's been nice and dry and hot Broccoli, Greyhound, Romanescu, um, Cauliflower, all under the blue and yellow cloche there at the side. And what else do we have here? We've got some Purple Top Milan in the middle bed there with some Swede as well. And the Swift Sweet Corn. Strawberries down in the middle of the fruit orchard. And just to the right there, if I stand on my tiptoes, we've got the broad beans and there are some more onions at the side. Storm Hector did for the broad beans. They were about five foot tall and, um, well, they're splayed about all over the place now, but they are covered in beans. We're on the inside of plot three now, and as you can see, the potatoes are coming on nicely. The ones at the back, they are the Picasso, they're a bigger potato and uh, both in the ground and on top, uh, as it were, because you can see that the halms, the tops of the potatoes, are probably about two foot six, getting on for three foot high, 
whereas the potatoes here just below these are the King Edward they're a little bit smaller and then down at the bottom here we've got a, a second planting of Pentland Javelin and they're just on the way through they're about 10 inch high Sweet corn didn't need staking on this plot because it's uh, more protected from the wind with all the raspberries and potatoes around them and they, they weren't as tall either this is the, the swift and for the first time this year uh, I've tried some gherkin plants and I've got four in this bed I think I've eight in another bed and then at the back of the new greenhouse I've about ten so that's the third plot as I say the broad beans took a hammer in uh, but there are lots of beans on them as you can see just there and um, some of them are still filling out but we keep taking them every few days bean frame at the side that's well and truly covered now the beans uh, are making their way to the top of the frame and uh, hopefully in a month or six weeks we should have some nice French beans I'm just bringing you briefly into the new greenhouse um, I'll just show you the workstation we've got some January Kings and quite a lot of kohlrabi to go out uh, a final batch of sweet corn I thought I'd uh, pick up on Steve's seaside allotment advice and maybe pop some in a large tub and keep them in the greenhouse and then uh, Maybe at the end of the season we'll have a, an extra uh, helping of uh, sweet corn. We've got the sunflowers still to go out. They'll be going out uh, before too long. But I just want to show you the, the grow room. This has prove, proven to be a fantastic space. I've got 10 gherkin plants climbing up a, a double cane frame there. And I've got four cucumber plants, two mini cucumbers, two large cucumbers and they've been very very prolific this, this season. I've had 21 cucumbers so far and I'll just show you what they look like. These are the big ones, the variety is Femspot and I think we've had about six large ones off and they're about another six to come off over the course of the next week. And these are the so-called mini cucumbers and um, they're not showing any signs of looking yellow or or off colour or anything like that and they're already half the size of a conventional cucumber and they're really really nice as well soft skinned really really juicy and tender really uh, recommend these and this one is a, a variety called Hara and it's a, a hybrid variety in F1 same variety on this side, the opposite side of the greenhouse and as you can see they're hanging like grapes there are so many of them we've taken I think about 15 or 16 of these off and we just can't eat them quickly enough some more large cucumbers here about another three or four waiting to be taken I think it's going to be a bumper year for uh, cucumbers and I've got another three cucumbers down the back there, they're the, the, the burr plus variety so uh, I'm anticipating having in excess of a hundred cucumbers this year and if you can see the gherkins are being watered in watering trays from the bottom and that also helps to add humidity to this grow room at the back and uh, it really is quite uh, humid in here in the middle of the day I keep the doors at the, the entrance wide open but it's still incredibly humid and sticky back here and uh, it seems to do the trick so um, if you've ever had trouble growing cucumbers that kind of thing then uh, this is a place to grow them in a, in a hot house beneath the shelf, the integral shelf we've got about nine pepper plants and they're, they're showing some small peppers as well I put them under there because it was just too hot when I put them on the shelf initially um, they were really suffering uh, but they seem to be coping quite well underneath so that's the, the large greenhouse I'm just going to show you one of the greenhouses with tomatoes and then we'll call it a day we're in the 10 by 10 greenhouse on plot 3 and all my tomatoes are about 4 foot high 
I would say, above the pot. As you can see, these are all the cherries. We've got 14 plants in here and uh, the tomato plants in the other two greenhouses are at the same sort of stage of development. Um, but they've all got cherries on these. And if I just show you here, we've got cherries on up to the third truss, even fourth truss on this one. And we've got Sun Gold, Sakura, Sun Baby and Black Cherry. So just five, uh, four varieties. I think I might have one uh, Rogue Green Grape as well. Um, so they're all doing exceptionally well. Uh, again, to say that they had a, a slow start to the season with very poor light when they were first potted on. The grapevine is in its third year and I've counted about 90 bunches of grapes. It's been pruned and I was tempted to prune some of the bunches of grapes out but they all seem to be doing so well I've decided to leave them. Now it may mean, I don't know, I'm not that experienced at growing grapes, it may mean that next season uh, is a lighter one in terms of harvest, in terms of yield. But um, last year we had a, a, a sink bowl full of grapes, this year it looks like we might have three or four bowls. Um, so that's certainly something to look forward to. Um, so that's it for this update. Uh, I've been very busy over the last month or so, uh, both on the plot and at work. So um, I'm sorry I've not uh, had m more of a presence on YouTube. Um, hopefully things will change in the weeks and months to come. But for today, the longest day of the year, that's it from me. So enjoy your plot and your greenhouses. Uh, enjoy the rest of the long days and the weather while it lasts and I'll see you soon. Thanks very much for watching and for subscribing and for commenting. Take care, all the best.